Hey guys, Nathan at Duck River Honey, and it is painting time in Tennessee. I have got uh, a little over a hundred supers to get painted, as well as bottom boards, top covers, um, just all sorts of stuff to get done in the next few days. So, it, you know, it's amazing. Last week we had several inches of snow and ice on the ground. The lows were in the single digits, and this week it's 60 degrees. It's, uh, it's just crazy. But the bees are flying today. I've seen them working hen bit and dead nettle. And I mean, swarm season is upon us. Box rotations are upon us. All this stuff is going to have to get done in the next week or two. And this is the first weather I've had to get painting done. So uh, this has got to get done now. And uh, hopefully that'll give me some time to let these air out before I have to use them. So I'll give you a walkthrough and show you how I've got things set up. So I'm in an old cattle barn here. This is actually one of my neighbors. It's not being used currently. And he was kind enough to let me borrow it to get all this stuff set up because we do have some rain forecast in the next couple weeks. And I wanted to get these in the dry and our barns are either in use or not, uh, don't have enough open space to get all this done. So I'm borrowing this one for a while. You can see what I did, old feed trough over here. I just put a single stretcher with a very knocked together set of legs these are actually made out of furring strips, two by two furring strips, because wood is so expensive at the moment. And then the trough, I've got bottom boards. I'm getting about seven supers on an eight foot stretcher. I can get eight, might even be able to get nine, but it starts getting tight. And I like having some room to work to not get bound up. Middle section here. Started running out of room and had to just put things wherever I could. So this one has got swarm trap spacers on it. I've got an old aluminum ladder here propped up on a empty bucket with emergency lids. Uh, these are going to be double screen boards. These are swarm trap bottoms. Another double screen board, couple of bottom boards. So this is a fence panel that wasn't being used and I just propped it up on the chute there. And then the other end is propped up on an empty watering tank. Use what you've got available. In this bay, I've got migratory tops, more supers. I do have a couple of fans and some lights so I can work in here at night and get some air circulation. So hopefully this stuff will dry a little quicker. Got bottom boards. These are Freeman style bottom boards. Here you can see the paint that I'm using. This comes from a recommendation from Bob Benny at Blue Ridge Honey Company. He's using exterior oil-based Sherwin-Williams premium grade primer and exterior grade acrylic latex enamel uh, paint, two coats. So I've got some of that. I've got some other paint that I may have to break out as well. I think I've got more stuff than I do paint. And here I've got some four by fours that are gonna become hive stands. I, I'll paint those as well, even though they're pressure treated, because that should help keep the carpenter bees out of them. And besides, you know, if you've got paint, these things will last forever. They're up off the ground and they're painted. And then these are just telescopic top covers. And I ran out of room to get these all spread out. So I'm gonna paint the sides of these in this stack and then I'll turn them over and paint, uh, paint the undersides. These have actually got a film on them that covers the metal. So I should be able to paint over the metal there. And then when I get done, I can just pull that film off and it's um, basically like taping the metal before you paint. So hopefully it'll look okay. I don't really care that much, but be nice if the paint job was pretty clean. 
So that's about it for now. I'll be living in this old barn for the next couple days, running out here uh, quite a bit, I would imagine. I'd say it'll take me quite a while to get through all this stuff. So I'll post updates as I go. everyone a um, couple days have passed since I got started on this I uh, worked until about 1130 the first night and got most of the supers done and then I finished up the base coat on the supers uh, yesterday morning and ran out of paint a couple of times had to get some more primer and stuff so I've still got just a little bit of primer to get on a few things and uh, I feel a little lazy saying this, but I was wore out yesterday and I didn't, I didn't use my respirator the first night. I thought I had enough ventilation in this you know, open air barn with fans running that it wasn't gonna be an issue, but I had a pounding, pounding headache all day yesterday. Um, so I got my respirator and, and uh, you know, should have done that from the start. It's dumb. I pay stupid tax every now and then. Uh, I try not to, but every now and then it, the stupid just gets a hold of me. give you a quick update I've got some uh, short help with me here today say hi Reed hi <laughs> I'll give you a quick walkthrough to show you where we're at in the process so all of the sort of green supers this is uh, I think the color is called catch of the day I painted some of these this color and painted all of the swarm trap equipment that color for a couple reasons. Uh, first is if it's visible from the road, I want it to be kind of a low key, out of the way color that um, is not very visible. And also because I am planning on putting swarm traps in people's driveways and yards and backyards and, and uh, stuff like that. And you know, if they're nice enough to let me place swarm traps, um, I'm going to be nice enough to not make them an eyesore. So I sort of want these to be as low key and um, out of sight as possible. So all of these are done. They've got two coats, been, the handles been brushed, edges are done. The white ones, I've got the first coat on them. The handles are done. I've still got to edge them, get the second coat on and then brush the handles again. Freeman bottom boards have the first coat of paint on them. They need another coat. Of course, all these are done. All the green stuff is done. I've been focusing on the swarm traps because I need to get them out this weekend. And um, I want this paint to be able to cure for a few days before I start using them. I've been slowed down by weather. It's been rainy and cold alternating. I don't like to paint when the humidity is 100% and if it's below 35 degrees, the label on the paint says don't, don't use it. These are gonna be double screen boards. I've gotta get the first, I think first coat of paint on these. I may have one coat on there already. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. 
Yeah, yeah buddy. Well, I got in there, didn't I? Daddy, come on. Like, that was a clue. You found a clue? What? A tied rope right there. Oh. A tied rope. You tied and a rope? a little box in those, in those little holes to the Cool. And an old blackboard. So these supers need edging. They need D-handles again. They need their second coat. All these bottom boards are done. And I've got a few more bottom boards up here that uh, need their first coat of paint. Almost all the white stuff I'm not super worried about. It's the swarm trap stuff that I've got to get done ASAP. And there's just a little bit more of that that I need to get done. So these migratory lids are finished. They are just curing, hardening off. And these telescopic lids have got their first coat of paint on the outside edge. And um, the bottom edge I'll paint as well, but I'll flip them over to do that after I get the second coat done. I need to get these finished ASAP because I'm actually gonna use these on some of the swarm traps I put up around my home apiary. Um, these are more expensive than the migratories or the flat lids that I'm using, so I'll only use these in places I'm not worried about theft. I'm now on day 47 of my Honey Super Painting Odyssey. That is in feels like time, not in actual time, sort of like with wind chill and humidity, the temperature feels like 10, but the actual temperature is 20. So it's only been about six or seven days, but it feels like 47. And guys, I gotta tell you that I'm getting so good at painting bee equipment that I've decided to start taking apprenticeship applications. So if you have ever had a desire to be a world-class honey super painter, then send an email to nathan at duckriverhoney.com and I will carefully examine your qualifications and may accept you into this exclusive program. Now I do guarantee that the skills that you will acquire during this course will have other beekeepers green with envy at the beauty and splendor of the honey supers that you paint. And guys, for a limited time only, out of the goodness of my heart and the freeness of your labor, I am offering this course at the low, low price of free. You show up and paint for hours and I won't even charge you. Spots are very limited, so please apply today. All right guys, in an effort to make this video slightly less boring than watching paint dry and maybe help out a beekeeper out there, um, I have painted a lot of equipment at this point and I have found some things I like and some things that I don't like, a couple ways of doing things that I think are pretty efficient. So I'm gonna run through that um, in case it helps somebody. So my medium supers painting the flats and the edges, I'm using a nine inch paint roller. Uh, the reason for that is I can get the entire side in one swipe um, and then it's efficient to get the edges at the same time. For the handles, I'm using a brush because I can go through very quickly and brush them. Of course, I'm letting them the flats and the edges dry overnight before I go through with the brush. Now for bottom boards, migratory lids, um, telescopic lids, almost everything else, I'm using a four inch roller. And the reason is it is a lot lighter than this nine inch. This one is pretty heavy, especially when it's got a full load of paint. And I've got tendonitis in my right elbow from overwork. And uh, this one is a lot easier on that. So it's just a lot less fatiguing and I prefer that. So um, that's the system I'm using. And real quickly, I'll show you how I think it is efficient to paint these things if you're gonna do it this way. So first thing I do is tilt, get the edge. Take about four strokes on the face. Get the other edge. Edge. 
face, edge, edge, face, edge, edge, face, edge. And then I am restocking paint on the roller after each super. Now repeat that a hundred times by two coats. So this system is working pretty well. It's slow and it's a lot of work, especially just for me by myself. So it's got me thinking about other ways to do this, which would be a wax dip tank. I don't know that I'm gonna have the volume to uh, justify that. But uh, I know that there's also those sprayers that will spray pure paint. You don't have to mix them or anything. I don't know anything about those. So if you guys can think of a better idea or a better way for me to do this, then please let me know in the comments. If there's some tools that are good, that work, that are durable, that would be a good investment, I would love to hear about it. I really, really would. Last row, guys. I am super duper happy to be coming to the end of this little project. If I could do a backflip, I believe I would. <laughs> I tried to learn how to do that when I was a kid, but I never could do it. You know, I bet I can still do a cartwheel though. We may find out. Last one. So I am not too old to do a cartwheel. <laughs> oh me. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, then please give me a like on it. That helps to get it out to other beekeepers, helps get my channel out to other beekeepers. And my goal here is to help beekeepers, specifically people get into beekeeping or to help new beekeepers be successful. Um, bees have got a lot of problems that they're facing, not honeybees, but uh, honeybees are too valuable to the human race to really be in peril, but native honeybee species are under extinction level pressures. And I'm not smart enough to solve those problems, but I think what I can do is to encourage others to get into beekeeping and nobody cares about bees as much as beekeepers. So I think if I can help to make more beekeepers, then maybe those beekeepers can solve some of the problems that bees are facing. So if you would, then help me out by hitting the like button, subscribing, and the bell for notifications. That'll let you know when I post new videos. I appreciate it, guys, and until next time.